Good morning. Um, Ryan and I want to provide you with information regarding the startup for the 2021 Main Lightning baseball season. We're thrilled and excited for our new rosters, our new families, um, our returning families. We're really, really excited about the 21 season. We are coming off, uh, I'm sorry, 22 season. We're coming off a great year in 21. We felt we were pretty strong at almost every level. And success to us means that our players developed. Our players are getting better as individuals. Our teams are competing. And, and we stay healthy. <clears throat> we learn the game of baseball. Um, and then we follow our players through their towns. For example, our, we have several high school players that were named to the All-SMAA, All-State teams, moving on, college commits. Uh, we're really proud of them, and, and that's, for us, that spells success. The 22 winter training season, and I say 22 because we call our spring season the next year, so let's call it 21-22. Training season will start November, I believe November 7th. Uh, that's a Sunday. And that practice schedule will be sent out to all families as soon as we have finalized the dates. We're waiting on some blackout dates from the dome. Uh, they've run a couple shows and we lose the dome for uh, two or three Sundays throughout our winter training. We're roughly looking at 18 dome workouts or Sunday workouts and nine midweek workouts, which is every other week. So 27 total workouts and uh, that should complete our winter training. When winter training is finalized, when it's finished, teams will break. Our older teams, 15 and up, will go in idle as they will start their high school seasons. Our 14 and under teams will start their seasons come April. That said, we do not continue team workouts April on due to the fact many players are uh, committed to town baseball as well. That said, your commitment to Maine Lightning is first and foremost in front of town ball. We love working with the towns. We want kids playing more baseball, getting more bats, more innings, playing more games. However, we can't have families choosing to go to town ball instead of Sunday, Saturday, Sunday games, which would deplete our rosters. We don't overload rosters, so therefore we're counting on the commitment level to be high from every family. If a player and family choose to put town baseball first, we will remove that person from the roster and fill. So please understand what you're getting into. We want to be very, very straightforward and upfront with that. Uh, there's no exceptions. The only exceptions I would say, or, or I would say uh, adjustments that we can make, if a family player alerts a coach that, hey, I'd love to play for my town ball team, they really need me this weekend, and our roster's full, that coach may say, yeah, it's not, it's not a conference game or a divisional game. Sure, go ahead. So if you have prior um, authorization from your coach, then we're, we're fine with that, but just communicate. We are entering another season where COVID is a factor. We are paying close attention to the guidelines from the CDC as well as, you know, the city of Portland where we train out of. And, you know, just to be upfront and, and very, very uh, open about this, it's not an easy decision from us on our end on, on whether to be, um, whether to require masks or not require masks. We've talked extensively with medical professionals lawyers, etc. The main lighting program for the 21-22 season and the startup of winter training will not require masks. And I'll repeat, we will not require masks. We will, however, and do, however, suggest that any individual who is not vaccinated, and obviously that includes 11-year-olds and under, we do suggest they wear masks indoors. That said, we're paying close attention. We may adjust that, it could, it could change. 
we're going to continue to follow our drop-off uh, policy to minimize the amount of people in our facility. And I know that's not ideal for families. Many want to come in and watch workouts. Uh, however, for the 21-22 winter training session, we're going to require drop-off only. Uh, and please do not come in the building. Uh, again, not an easy decision, but it's one you know that that we're rolling with. We have sanitized sanitizer stations set up throughout, hand sanitizer, uh, soap and water in the bathroom. We're, we're going to you know push that the kids wash their hands, um, use the dispensers, and again, you know, 11 and under wear masks. That's a recommendation, by the way. Your coaches will be given the rosters and contacts. <clears throat> they don't have that yet. That's why you haven't heard from your coaches. Once they're, they're given the contact info, they'll be sending you a welcome letter. And in that welcome letter, they'll give you their expectations. They'll share some lightning policies, um, how to communicate with them best, the best uh, way to do so, when is appropriate, when's not appropriate. Uh, and just, just to touch on that, for example, parent, a parent may not be happy with playing time. And we know that happens every season, every team just about. And we get it. It is not appropriate to approach that coach on the field before a game or after a game. And even that night, give it 24 hours, let the coach get home, send an email, make a phone call, whatever that coach, you know, how, whichever mean, means of communication that coach prefers, follow that and then contact your coach. Do not do it before a game on the field, after a game on the field. Um, if that happens, then we'll make some, um, you know, some phone calls, we'll get together, we'll discuss why it happened and then, uh, you know, we'll take it from there. But we haven't had too many issues with this. I want to just remind you all that that's a really big no-no. So please be respectful to our policies and uh, adhere to the parent contract, and that's in there. Along with that, just to touch on playing time, minimal play time is, is half a game. If a game is shortened because of 10-run rule, you know, there's nothing we can do there. If a coach is planning on playing your son the second half of the game in lost innings, uh, please be mindful of that, that it does not include shortened games. We will talk to coaches about playing time, how to increase that and, and level the playing field a little bit as far as innings played. But I want to also be very clear that it is not equal playing time in this program. Main Lightning does not require equal playing time at all. What we do require is every player plays one out of two games. Our staff has been meeting. Rosters have changed slightly. We're still adding a couple coaches here and there. Mostly, we're probably 95% full as far as rosters go uh, and coaching positions. So we're really excited to get started here and send out those letters, but you can expect those uh, fairly soon. We will we'll send you a link for the training schedule. Um, your, your son will bring in his equipment to every workout. Please label that equipment, bats, gloves, hats, etc. cetera. Um, every year we have players leave stuff in there, and I know this equipment is expensive, believe me. Um, we know the price of bats these days. So label everything. Please do not wear a white T-shirt to practices. We don't want the ball to get you know, lost in that shirt. Um, so wear a dark shirt. We are working really hard to, to provide our practice gear before we step foot in the dome and in the, the edge in, in November. So practice gear will be ordered. Hopefully that will be sent out shortly. Um, league apps will be the, uh, the software that we use again for contacting you and also reminding you of practices, games, etc. If you're not registered in, in League Apps, you need to do that immediately. If you don't know how to do that, please send an email to the Edge Academy, go on our website, or contact Donnie Dutton, who will be overseeing League Apps for our Lightning families. Back to the uniform and apparel and testing. 
I'll let Ryan tell you a little more about that, but um, again, all orders, once they get put in, will be final. If we had one player, I think, put in an order for a, a, a large uniform last year and they put in, they, they, they checked off a youth large, they needed a, an adult large, that's out of our control. That family would have to order a brand new uniform and also eat the cost of that. So just be clear, when you order your uniforms online, make sure you're, you're checking off the correct boxes. Um, Ryan will talk to you also about Christmas orders and, and, and uh, fan gear and all that um, stuff. So I'll let him take over and discuss uniforms and apparel testing. So our uniform packages are going to be very standard what we've done the past couple years. Two jerseys, uh, an outerwear piece, our practice wear, the hats, uh, belts, pants, all of that stuff will be on the store which you guys are familiar with for the returning families anyway, that are familiar with the past couple years. We'll also include a Christmas store, which is where we'll supply or, or have the ability to put on sweatshirts and t-shirts and quarter zip jackets, pairs of shorts and different things that um, you guys as parents would wear or would like to wear, as well as kids. Um, we are totally open to any suggestions that parents want on the stores. Um, we've had some suggestions for sea bags uh, for the moms. We've had uh, polo golf shirts for uh, for dads and, and the kids. So if you have suggestions with what you'd like to see on a on an apparel store, by all means, we're we're open to that. Um, the sizing will take place the same night that we do our meet and greet with the coaches, as well as our player testing, which I'll get into. So we will have one night. I would expect. Um, an hour and 15 minutes to an hour and a half, depending on how long your coaches will want to meet. We'll run through our player testing, which will take about a half an hour. Um, our apparel sizing per team, which will take roughly another half an hour, and then you guys can meet with your coaches individually. The testing part is something that's new for us this year. We want to track and show the progress that our players are making through the winter training. So we're going to test in uh, exit velocity, our arm velocity, and our quickness and change of direction. So those will be three things that we train our players throughout the course of the winter in, in trying to improve. One of the biggest reasons why is when the players get to the 17 showcase level, that is how players are recruited. It's a major, major piece to it. Those are the first questions I get with phone calls from college coaches. How hard does he throw? How hard does he hit? How fast does he run? Um, and so we want to start training our guys, even at the youngest age groups, to prepare for those things and, and implement those into our winter training. So our winter training is going to be a little different this year because of the testing that we're gonna implement and then the training that will enhance the testing. Um, all of our winter training practices, as always, are optional. Uh, it, it's no secret at this point, any kid that attends the majority or all of the winter practices is significantly improved by the time we get out on the field. Um, and it's a noticeable difference, not just in town ball, but within the, you know, our own organization. We, we also, to add to that, our winter training is gonna focus on the individual and the team. So we're gonna focus on that individual by really, really uh, targeting primary positions. If your son is a shortstop, he's gonna go to middle infield. If his secondary position is pitching, he's gonna go to the pitching station odd weeks. So it's gonna be even weeks, odd weeks, or, or, or primary, secondary weeks. And the curriculum will remain, or practice plan will remain the same for both weeks. You know, understanding that the player is gonna make that decision themselves. So we'll, play, we'll pay pretty close attention to, you know, numbers where they're at. We may shift the player and say, I know your primary, primary position is middle infield, but we're really high in numbers we may shift three of them to pitching uh, during a primary week, but secondary week, they'll go in to middle infield and get that same instruction. So we're really committed to the individual training and then come you know, week 11, week 14 maybe, we haven't decided when we're gonna break off as teams. Those teams will start to figure out their systems and will implement the lightning pro uh, uh, process for all systems like first and third bunt coverage in, uh, coverages pickoffs we'll implement that as a as a program and that way the teams can have um, those areas covered 
and be ready for that play during um, April and May. So to keep going with the, the winter training stuff and how we're changing, uh, as every year we've reinvested into different training tools um, as well as different training applications that we're going to share with our coaches so where we have coaches meetings uh, where we can we can go over how each drill is done and each drill is performed we have a video series that we're providing with the coaches they may or may not be able to or, or willing to share some of that stuff with you we, we encourage some of the skills and drills um, definitely to share with the families well, those will be some changes that we make going into the off season. It's not just enhancing the training, but enhancing our, our coaching um, all around. At any point in time, if, if if something's not working for your your child, let us know. We'll make some changes, adjustments that, that hopefully they can be happier with. We do expect players to take advantage of. The, the practices that we provide, the service that we provide. We do understand there's multi-sport athletes in this program, which we, we love. Skiers, basketball players, wrestlers, uh, who knows, hockey players. Make the practices you can make. The ones you can't make, communicate with your coach. Let your coach know why, so that way he knows that you're competing in another sport. That's important, you know, so that line of communication when you can attend and not attend, um, that'll help the, the, the uh, coaches with their practice plans as well. Um, anyway, that's all we have for you for now. We're really, really excited for the upcoming year. I know our coaches are excited uh, based on the information that we provided the other night in our coaches meeting. They liked it. They liked the direction we're going. So we, we try to get coaches input try to make sure that, that we're listening to, to, to all as far as developing curriculum, the structure of practices, the formats, all of it. Um, you know, from apparel to instruction to timing. So we're gonna stay on, on track with the Sunday workouts. We're excited about that. Um, that's been a really, I, I think, staple to what we do in the winter as far as uh, limiting conflicts. So we, we, we will stay with the Sunday nights and then the, the every other bi-weekly bi workouts will, will take place as well. And those are generally an hour per team. Come in, get some hitting in. Who knows, maybe the coach is going to do bunting that hour. Um, that's really for the coaches to take you know, that time with their teams. So communicate with your coaches. Let them know when you can and cannot make it. Uh, also, to, lastly, when we do come in for uh, testing, when we come in for apparel sizing, We'll try to do a meet and greet with you and your coach and those teams. You'll get a chance to put a, a face with a name. That coach will be able to talk to you about his expectations uh, for the upcoming season. And it's a really good time to just, just get together and chat. So uh, that'll be happening at the end of October. At the end of October. Okay, that's all we have for you. Um, we're excited.